to take God's Word, please, and open it to the book of 2 Timothy, the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we'll begin our text there in just a moment. In our early service this morning, I did not finish the sermon, um, since we don't have to let out in time for Sunday school, I suspect I may finish it in this service, um, or not, I don't know, but anyway, I, what I want to do today is look in 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning at verse 14, and work our way through the fourth chapter as well. Um, I have this idea that maybe sometimes we get bored with doing the same old thing over and over. Um, we, 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 we buy stuff that we don't need simply because it's new and it's novel. I think sometimes we bring that same attitude into the Christian life that, you know what, we come to church and all we ever do is sing and pray and preach as though that is a bad thing. And we, we, we think, well, we've got to have more. We've got to have something different. We, we've got to be on the cutting edge. We've got to have something new. And I would suggest to you today that we cannot improve upon that which the Lord has given us to do, which is to sing and to pray and to preach. And by the way, they practiced that song another time or two. They'll have her down, I think. Was that not wonderful? And I'm telling you, it was wonderful because it was about the blood of Jesus, without which there is no salvation. There is no forgiveness of sin. There is no fellowship with the Lord without the blood of Christ. We're in 2 Timothy now, chapter 3, verse 14. But continue thou in the things that thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at His appearing and His kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust they shall keep to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry." Our Father in heaven, we bow to thank you for your loving kindness and grace. Thank you for saving us by the blood of the Lord Jesus. Father, we rejoice in the hope that we have because of the sacrificial, vicarious death of Christ. We thank you, Father, that we have the certainty of being in your presence some glad day because of the blood of Christ. We pray now for this service. If there's one here without Christ, Lord, our prayer, our desire is that they might come to believe on Christ and receive eternal life today. May your name be glorified, for it's in the name of Christ that we pray. Amen. As Paul comes to the end of his life and death is imminent and he's aware of it, he picks up his inspired pen to write one final word to his son in the ministry. What would he say to this son in the ministry? Oh, he's not a physical son. He's a spiritual son. And Paul is discipled and trained and labored beside. And they have worked so well together. And now he writes one final word, one last letter to Timothy. What would he say? What would you say to your son? If you were to write him one last letter, what would it say? If you were to write your daughter one last uh, letter, what would it say? It is amazing to me that Paul says, knowing that this is no doubt his last letter, he's about to die, that he says to Timothy, but continue thou in the things that thou hast learned. That suggests to us, first of all, that Paul was confident that what Timothy had learned, what he had instilled in the mind of Timothy, what his mother and his grandmother had taught him was true and it was worth 
going on and continuing in. Can I suggest to you this morning that the Christian life is not about new and novel things. It is not about bigger buttons and brighter lights. The Christian life begins with Jesus, continues with Jesus, and bless God, it'll end with Jesus around the throne of God. What? Let's just continue in what we already have in the Lord Jesus. Now he deals with the word of God in this text. And the first thing that he tells us, and I'm going to just say two things if I can. First of all, he says that we are to be, we are to have certain convictions about the word of God. We are to have certain convictions about the word of God. You'll notice in verse 14 that he starts with a contrastive but. And he says, but continue thou in the things that you have learned. You see, there was, there, at the beginning of the chapter, he's talked about false teachers. He's talked about those who are, who are chasing after every spirit that is in the world. But he puts his finger on Timothy and he says, but not you, but you. Instead of following after every false doctrine, but you, instead of believing everything that is new and novel, you continue in what you have learned. It is a present tense verb. It is to be a way of life, day in and day out. He was to continue in the things that he had learned. Notice that he said you're to develop some convictions. The things that you have learned and have been assured of. These were convictions that were in his heart. And he said, you've got good and godly and wholesome convictions. Continue in the convictions. But now look what he says. Why? Those convictions were not family traditions. Those convictions were not what somebody had instilled. or He did not develop them as the result of reading a book. But he says, these convictions of yours have come from the Holy Scriptures. I want to ask you, from whence did yours come? Your convictions, what you believe, your core values, what are they? Where did you get them? Are they worth saying to your children, you just continue in those. Notice what he says. That you have learned the Holy Scriptures. That from a child you have known the Holy Scriptures. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. I'm going to just tell you this. You know it. We're on the same page on this. But every once in a while it needs to be said. We're going to be a Bible Christ centered church or nothing at all. And this verse tells us why. This verse tells us why on Sunday morning we have preaching twice. This verse tells us why on Sunday night we have preaching again. This verse tells us again why we have preaching on Wednesday night. And you can go through our building on Wednesday night. And there is a a 20 and 30 year olds. And they're studying the word of God together. You can go a little further and you'll find teenagers. And they're studying the word of God together. You can go in the other hallway. And there is a room of children. And they're studying the word of God together. You can go where the 2 and 3 year olds are. And there they're being taught the word of God. Why? Because it is the Bible. And only the Bible. That makes men wise unto salvation why continue in just the same old thing of praying singing and preaching because it makes people wise unto salvation I would say to you this morning that the pastor the church that does not have the word of God as the centerpiece of all it does that is not a church and a pastor that cares for your soul but the church that says you know what Everything revolves around this. That's the church that cares for your eternity-bound soul. That's the church that cares for you because this is what makes you wise unto salvation. You remember when you were made wise unto salvation? It was a process, wasn't it? Uh, my, my conversion experience wasn't like there was a big light that came on all at one time. But over the process of time, uh, from hearing the word of God, I became wise unto salvation. I had Sunday school teachers that, that taught the Bible in their classes when they wasn't trying to uh, do right control. And, and I had... Um, 
I had a mom and daddy that taught me the Word of God. Boy, we had family devotions back in the day. I don't know if anybody has those anymore or not. But I'll tell you, if you have a family devotion, if you'll use the Word of God, you know what it'll do? It'll make your little boy, it'll make your little girl wise unto salvation. And I heard, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I heard from this book, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. I heard from this book. There is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good. And I was being made. That was part of the process of being made wise unto salvation. And I heard that Christ died for us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died from us. I wouldn't have known it. I wouldn't have figured it out had it not been said in the Bible. I would have never looked at the stars and figured it out that I'm a sinner. But God loves me and gave his son to die for me. I would have never been able to look at creation and said, there is grace with God. There is forgiveness with God. The only way that anybody can ever be made wise unto salvation is through the preaching of the word of God. The scriptures are able to make the wise under salvation, I, I, I'll just tell you this. It was the scriptures that let me know that all my righteousness were as filthy rags in the sight of God. And it was the scriptures that told me that if I wanted to be saved, I could be saved. But it would have to be by grace through faith. What would you suppose if man left to himself would come up? What kind of a plan of salvation would he come up with? I'm telling you, if man left to himself came up with a plan of salvation, you can rest assured it would be works oriented and it would be man glorifying. You've got to open the pages of the Word of God to read these words. For by grace we are saved, by faith, by grace through faith are we saved. Not of works lest any man should boast. The Bible makes men wise unto salvation from their sin to the gift of eternal life in Christ to the means of salvation by grace through faith you don't get that in a novel you get that in the word of God why would we do anything less but preach every time we open the doors but preach teach and everything we do if it is this book that makes people wise unto salvation why would we resort to another book why would we give up on this book when this book makes people wise under salvation. But I want to tell you why, what, what else he says. Not only should he continue because the scriptures make him wise under salvation, but the scriptures are of God. The scriptures are of God. For he says in verse 16, and all pos scripture, graphe, inspired, uh, theonustos, of God for all scripture all scripture is inspired of God do you see do you see the the extent of inspiration he says all scripture is given by inspiration of God that means the totality of pos it is it is the part it is the sum total of all of the parts taken together you can take the law and the prophets they're inspired of God you you can take the psalms they're inspired of God you can take the gospels they're inspired by God you can take the church letters inspired by God Take the pastorals. They're inspired of God. Take the general epistles. They're inspired of God. Take the book of the Revelation. It is inspired of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All that we have in this book today that makes people wise unto salvation is the result not of man but of God. All scripture pass. All of it. Both testaments. All of it. Did you know Jesus believed in the inspiration of the scriptures? Jesus said, not one jot, not one tittle will pass from the law until all of it had been fulfilled. I, I, didn't, I, I thought I had pretty good eyesight until I started studying biblical languages. And that little jot and that little tittle made me have to get some glasses. Where I could say, just, a, just a stroke, just a, just a diaphragmatic marking, just a little notation, just a small mark. And Jesus said, even that little small mark, that diacritical marking, it'll all be fulfilled. Nothing is going to pass away. Jesus is teaching us about the scriptures. And he said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. 
All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, that supernatural work of the Holy Spirit of God. When the God breathed out His words to men so that they wrote down exactly without error what God wanted written down. This is an unusual book. This is unlike any other book you'll ever read. I have a wide range of books that I read. Not all of them are theological. Some of them are just casual reading. I've read A Coach's Life by Dean Smith, former coach at the University of North Carolina. Bobby Bowden's book is a great book on coaching. Uh, I, I've read um, 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 Hawthorne's books and The Great Gadsby. And, uh, I've read some other books, but <laughs> not all of them are theological in nature. But you know, I've never read a book. And got up from reading that book and think, you know what, something happened. My heart has been strangely warmed. That's never happened. I've never read another book and say, you know what, that book changed my life for good. That book has changed me from the inside out. But I'm going to tell you, I've read this book in just about every kind of context you can imagine. On a deer stand, in a comfortable chair in my home, on my face before God. And I've never read this book, but what I was not changed from glory unto glory into the image of Jesus Christ. This book will change you. This book will inform you. This book will tell you about time and eternity. It'll tell you about life and death. This book will tell you about the issues of life. But it, it, it'll, it'll do more than just inform you. This book has the ability to change you. It informs, but it also transforms. It changes us. You see, he says, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is not the kind of book that man would write if he could or could write if he would. This is uniquely the book of God. And when the Bible speaks, God speaks. You know, sometimes people... Think, well, if God would just speak to me in an audible voice, I want to say to you that God has spoken to you, and it's louder than an audible voice, and it's in this book. You won't hear the voice of God any louder than you hear it right here in the pages of the Word of God. All Scripture. Well, there's a second thing that he says about the Scriptures. We ought to have some convictions about the Bible, y'all. And that conviction ought to be that it is the Word of God. The second thing we ought to have concerning the Word of God is not only convictions, but we ought to have a commitment to it. It is unfortunate that there is a chapter division beginning in chapter 4 because you can see the relationship between chapter 3 and chapter 4 when he says, I charge thee therefore. By the way, that is, that is a solemn word. Uh, I charge thee, I adjure thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just pause right here and say this. You see that little preposition before God? He's saying that we live out our lives in the presence of God. I charge thee before God in the presence of God. You live out your life in the presence of God. When you go to work, you do it in the presence of God. When you go to bed at night, you do it in the presence of God. When you go on vacation, you do it in the presence of God. There is nothing, he says, I charge thee in the presence of God. Everything that you do is in God's presence. And then he, he brings up three things that, that, that make our minds go toward end time events, eschatological events. Notice what he says, first of all. He says, who shall judge at his appearing and his kingdom. See, he says there's going to be a judgment. There's going to be an appearing and there's, there, there is a kingdom. And he says all of this thing to, to remind us that what we do for God matters. And what we do for God is going to be judged. And in light of that, this is what he says. Preach the word. What word? The word that has been inspired by God. The word that God gave through his holy prophets. The word that God gave to us in the scriptures. These holy writings, the graphe, he says, preach that word. Uh, by the way, don't apologize for it either. You ever try to apologize for God? God doesn't need us to try to make an apology for him. He says, just preach the word I, and, and defend the Bible. People go around, well, I'm going to defend the Bible, defend the Bible. I like what W.A. Criswell said about it. He said, defending the Bible is like trying to defend a lion. Just open the cage and it'll defend itself. <laughs> defend the Bible. <laughs> really? 
Just preach it. It'll do its work. And he says, preach the word. Caruso. Preach the word. We are a man of God is nothing but a herald. He announces what the king wants announced. He didn't come up with the message. He doesn't manufacture the message. He just simply preaches the message that God has given. Preach the word. And he says, be instant in season, out of season. I've done a little preaching out of season and other things out of season, but preaching out of season. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. The idea is to be ready. It is to be present. It is the idea of a soldier in the army. He is at hand. He's at his post. He's ready at a moment's notice. Be instant, in season, out of season. And I'm telling you, if we've ever lived in an out of season time for preaching the word of God, it's today. In our world of pluralism, in our world of exchange of ideas, we're living in a day where people, people put their ideas on the same level that they put the sacred writings of God. I'm here to tell you that my ideas and your ideas are not on the same level as God's Word. We must submit to the Lordship of God and to His Word. Amen. He said, continue. Continue in the things that you've learned. Folks, everything that we've learned is not wrong. Everything we've learned is not bad. If it's tradition that is unfounded on the Word of God, we're not bound by that. But if it is the Word of God, we are bound by that. You may think today, I don't know what it matters. I don't know what it matters if we continue in the things that we've learned. I don't know what it matters, this thing about the Bible. Well, let me ask you this question. Does it matter if your kids go to hell? Does it matter if you go to hell? Does it matter if your grandkids go to hell? If it matters, then this book matters. Because there's no other way for them to know the way of salvation except by this book. There's no other way for a lost world to be saved except by the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Continue. This book will make you wise unto salvation. But he said it will also equip you to all good works. How do you know what pleases God and what displeases God? It just depends on what this book says. If this book says it pleases God, it does. If it says it doesn't, it doesn't. How do we know? The word of God. Continue. Go on, abide, remain in the things that you've learned. I want us to stand together and bow our heads. I want to ask you this morning, has the word of God made you wise unto salvation? Has it taught you and shown you, revealed to you your need of salvation? The way of salvation through Jesus Christ. This morning you can be saved if you'll believe on the name of the only begotten Son of God. If you'll trust Him, believe on Him, you can have life everlasting. This morning it may be that we need to renew our commitment to the Word of God. That we'll vow to read it, to live it, apply it to our lives. Our Father, we pray that you'll use the message for your glory. If there's one here now who's without Christ, Father, we pray that they will come to believe on Him and receive eternal life while they have time and opportunity. We pray, Father, that they would put their trust in you and be saved. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.